Plumster Covered Market. There's been a market on this site, I think, since about the 1500s. And that's the site of the old Woolwich Arsenal. Now a luxury private development with its own pier. So this was a really beautiful old Georgian house from the sort of heyday of the Royal Arsenal. And it's finally fallen down. It was a really sad sight when I came here sort of seven years ago, but... So today, we're gonna go up, up the hill here from Woolwich, up to uh, Bostel Woods, Lenay Abbey. But this is more or less the walk that I did uh, seven years ago for chapter three of my book, This Other London. Fantastic walk. That day I went on to Dartford Salt Marshes. By the way, look out, there's some more dates going on sale for my walks for Waltham Forest Tours. Waltham Forest Borough of Culture. So, um, first lot sold out. I'm going to put some more on sale. It'll be, be on sale by the time you watch this video. Just going to go up this hill here to get to a long stretch of common that runs along the ridge that goes all the way down to Erith to the east and uh, heading west it goes through Greenwich. The first of many fine views that we're going to get today. Still got further to climb. This is a beguiling little path, St Margaret's Path. It leads off a Burridge Road down there. Very romantic little trackway. St Margaret's Grove. So we could have taken that little path actually, St Margaret's Path. So at this stage, we are basically going to be following the Green Chain Walk across Plumstead Common and onwards. This is really beautiful. I actually didn't come across this little patch of open ground when I did the walk for my book. I went directly up to Bostel Woods from Plumstead High Street. But this is really delightful, isn't it? I know quite a few of you have suggested coming out to Linnae Abbey um, and I've been meaning to redo the walk for, for ages um, since like I say I think it was, it, was, uh, it was June or July 2012 so it's taken me a while but today just felt like the perfect day it's exactly what I wanted so I'm using a new app to do a trace of my walk. I know some of you have asked me to do this, haven't you? So I'll try and find a way to share it, but at the very least I'll pop it on the screen at the end. I think it's called Map My Walk, rather uh, imaginatively. Let's see if it's any good. What's this curious padlocked anachronism here? Lurking in the undergrowth beside the path. Any ideas? This is a really fantastic bit of meadowland here on the path. You can see, look, the, the deep ravine at the top. This is a very dramatic landscape that we've uh, kind of built these South London suburbs atop. In a lot of ways, this walk was one of the most revelatory walks I did for this other London because it really did reveal the topography of the southern half of the, of the Thames Basin, particularly as you go down to Erith and the escarpment comes to an end down by the Thames. It was really uh, very dramatic and it really did sort of uh, teach me a lot, I suppose, about the, the physical shape of London. This is the kind of thing that could be a bomb crater, actually. It seems so evenly gorged out. And you can see here, we're within the territory of some of previous walks, the Shrewsbury Park, which is where I went with Ian Sinclair that day when we uh, went to the Burial Man and we did Steve Moore's Psychic Circuit. You see Oxley's Wood and Crystal Palace Park. The walk I did about, I think it's exactly a year ago actually. I went up over Woolwich Common. I love these kind of metallic 
Maps, Shooter's Hill and Plumster Common and here we are on Plumster Common. We're going to go down here, we'll go down to Lillian Abbey. Some facts about the area. Where did highwaymen once hold up the traffic but usually end up swinging in the gibbets? 26 degrees today. Hottest day of the year so far, 2nd of June. But I think it's going to be a cracking summer. My, uh, my voice sounds a bit strange, it's because I've had a cold for about a month, it seems. Anyway, certainly a good three weeks of being really blocked up. Today's first day I sort of start to feel a bit better. Down this set of steps into that ravine. I suppose social history here by the, by the Slade Ponds. It says, uh, I'll just read the first couple of sentences. In 1876, local people held a massive demonstration on Plumstead Common because the landlords started selling off parcels of lands to speculators. The resulting uh, Plumstead Common Act of 1878 ensured that the land remained as public open space forever. You see, we should never take these things for granted. People fought to keep this land as common land for us to enjoy all these years later. It's a little taster. Some of the views we'll get from the edge of Bostor Woods, from Lanay Abbey. Some tremendous views back across the Thames. You can see the barking flood relief uh, barrier over there. I'll put an arrow in, so it's obviously very difficult to see. Can, you can actually see this ridge of land I'm walking along now from the far end of Wanstead Flats all the way over there in East London, in North East London. If you go to one corner near Aldersbrook and you look back, you see this dark ridge running along here. It's a really magical thing to see rising in the distance, particularly when you've been up here, you know. Back down now into the woods. I actually had a bit of a scramble through that bit of woodland there which I don't think is the actual correct way to go on the green chain, but it's brought me out to this view here. Yeah, the green chain walk actually goes around that thicket there, not the path that takes you through it as I went. It doesn't really make much difference. And now we cross over, carry on that way. old gas lamp there, or it could even be a, a stink pipe. Oh, how did I miss the Roman Barrow 200 yards back that way? There was a mound over there that I thought, I wonder what that is? It's funny, you know, because oh, there's finger marks over this lens. What's going on? It's, uh, it's funny though, because back there, when we were by Slade Ponds, I thought of mentioning the proliferation of burial mounds along this high ridge of land. So we have the, uh, the Shooter's Hill tumulus, where I went with the Inn Sinclair, Steve Moore's site of great resonance, which is very close by. And then um, there's a tumulus at the far end of, of Bostal Woods, near Lanay Abbey. And there are probably multiple others, actually along this ridge that just haven't been uh, either haven't been excavated or discovered or were built over which is more likely actually and uh, of course there's the one in Marion Park where again I went with Ian Sinclair that day lots of prehistoric sites so you can imagine when you got one or two close by there's probably a lot more but sadly a lot of them were uh, destroyed by uh, development and before that they would have been destroyed by agriculture even so this is a ancient landscape See Bostal Woods rising there at the end of this road. The path takes us slightly around the block to get there. But it's a really powerful, magical wood there. What a beautiful feather that's just found by the path here. Lovely green colour. So among the many wonders of Bostal Woods, 
there is an area where you're I think, encouraged to look for prehistoric shark's teeth. Fossilized shark's teeth. I don't know where it is there. I am going to depart from the green chain walk now because I must walk along this path here. How can I resist this? So I'm meandering up and down in this wood. It's quite hard work I'm climbing again up the hill here. It's a magnificent tract of woodland though. This is where I am now in Boston Woods. I'm going to head over there to Linnae Abbey. Oh, such a dramatic landscape. I've got to go down here now and through this ravine. Here we have a, an offering to the sock god left in the sock tree in Boston Woods, a well known local South London custom. So we are now back on the Green Chain Walk. The Green Chain Walk took a big loop around, although it did go to Turpin's Cave, which would have been interesting. Anyway, I had a good walk around in the woods there. But now we're going to follow the Green Chain down to Lanay Abbey. It's interesting, I'd forgotten this part of the walk actually, where you have to go out along the main road a little bit and then cut through a housing estate to get back to the wood. It's funny, isn't it, how we kind of edit our memories. So here it is, Lenay Abbey. I think one of the most dramatic sights in all of London. This was one of my favourite things to write about in my book, This Other London. It really is a magnificent old ruin. So Lenay Abbey was built, I think, in uh, 1178. I did look at my book before I came out this morning by a guy called uh, Richard de Lucy, and he was one of the Norman barons that had been excommunicated by Thomas Beckett. And of course, after Beckett got his head chopped off and caved in in Canterbury Cathedral, de Lucy was one of the guys that thought that was gonna look a bit bad in the eyes of God, so he built this abbey, I think, to try and make amends, and it was dedicated to St. Thomas. I think they were Augustinian monks that moved out of the city and came up here because it was a really secluded spot with the wood behind, the Thames stretching below and they came up here to worship in solitude. It really still has a very powerful kind of resonance, doesn't it? Even with the towers of sort of uh, Thamesmead down below. The records show that Lenay was in a constant state of disrepair and financial disarray. When the Bishop of Rochester visited in 1349, the fabric of the building was so destroyed through lack of care that it could not be repaired during the present century or even before the Day of Judgment. Those kids aren't actually allowed to clamber on the walls, but given that they're still standing over 650 years after the Bishop of Rochester's visit, it can't do much harm. Not long after Henry VIII dissolved the monasteries, the Ney was being plundered for its stone. When you, when you think about all the buildings that we've lost in London, the fact that this has remained in a ruined state for around 500 years, it's quite remarkable. It makes it a really special place to, be able to walk through the footprint of the Abbey and imagine the life that was lived here. You know? This is one of the uh, ancient King James I mulberry trees. There's a few of these dotted around London. Magnificent view looking west. The London skyline in the distance there. Just been sat having a nice little rest by the abbey here, enjoying the, uh, the peace this beautiful site and I've decided actually rather than walk down to Erith and retrace the walk I did seven years ago I'm actually going to go down and continue along the Green Chain Walk and walk down through Thamesmead and then maybe loop back to Woolwich Arsenal.
Thamesmead Estate is the, uh, is the site for an enormous regeneration project. I'm not entirely sure what they're doing, but it's one of the biggest uh, regeneration projects in London, if not the biggest. It reminds me a bit of the Brunswick Centre, actually. Of course, Thamesmead's most famous for being the setting for Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange. There's obviously a lot more to Thamesmead than just that. Free running horses. Hmm. That'd be interesting. There in the distance you have Crossness Point Sewage Treatment Works, termination point for the Southern Outfall Sewer. Incredibly important place in the infrastructure of London. This is Erith Marshes. I mean, it's incredible really the way that Thamesmead Estate just sits here in the marshes on Erith Marshes, this great kind of modernist housing scheme, out here right in the, the wilds of South East London, on the floodplain. I'd like to do is walk back to North Woolwich along the Thames Path, but I don't know if it does go that way actually. So I will, if I can't do that, I will walk along the uh, what they call the Ridgeway, which is the Southern Outfall Sewer. And a walk I did, what was it, 2009, 2010 with Nick Papadimitri. But Let's see if we can get onto the path and go back uh, west. It seems pretty clear that the way back to Woolwich is along this path here, which is, as I remember it, is a really lovely walk anyway, actually. So I am going to actually come off the, uh, the ridgeway and head down towards the Thames just to see if I can get along the Thames path back towards Arsenal. Also, I've never seen this part of uh, Thames Mead, so it'll be interesting. Also, how could I resist this bridge? So this is already paying off. Great little waterway here. I'm guessing this is a, an artificial waterway, a little canal that they put through the housing estate. So I think on the other side of these trees and this mound, we'll have the Thames, which will be a great moment on this walk, won't it? Let's see. So this is just perfect. Here we have the Thames. There, looking east, straight across the water to Barking. You can see there the flood relief barrier down there at the end of the, the river roading where it makes a confluence of the Thames at Creek Mouth. This is just perfect.
This is great as well. We can now follow the Thames path back west, back to Woolwich. Unintentionally, I've gone from the, the western part of the Thames path from partly to Richmond in the last video I made, which was about three weeks ago actually that I, that I did that walk, to now walking way out along the eastern part of the, uh, the Thames path here. Thames Mead going down to, uh, to Woolwich. So satisfying symmetry in that. So here we are, Tripcock Ness Lighthouse. It's not easy to say Tripcock Ness. It's only my third or fourth attempt. You can see a change in the waterfront now as we've turned the headland. We're heading directly now into, into Woolwich. Now my biggest decision is uh, how to get back home. I've got the choice I could go through the, the Woolwich foot tunnel, which is quite a dramatic thing to do come out on the, in North Woolwich and get the DLR from there. I could get the, uh, the free ferry, the car ferry over and do the same thing. Or I can just walk up to North Woolwich and end the walk where I started, which feels kind of appropriate, doesn't it? So I'm gonna walk through the old Royal Arsenal and up to the DLR. Actually, I think it's the Royal Artillery Museum is in here somewhere. As I've uh, mentioned on previous Woolwich uh, videos, this is the original home of, of the football club, Arsenal, before they moved over to Highbury in North London. So the, the gatehouse where we started our walk is just around the corner here. So that really means it brings the walk to a close. Something very satisfying about doing a circular walk. I, I rarely do them, actually. But uh, that was an amazing walk today. Thank you so much for, for joining me on this uh, magnificent walk and I look forward to seeing you on the next one, wherever that may be. I'll